Let's take a look at your work from part one. Number one is an unless statement, and typically we translate those as disjunctive statements with a wedge. So using R and F as our propositions, number one is R wedge F. If you chose different letters to represent the propositions, that's fine. You just want to make sure that you have number one translated as a disjunctive statement using the wedge. Number two is an if then statement, and we know a couple of things. One is that we're going to be using a horseshoe anytime we have an if then statement, and we know that whatever the statement is that follows the word if is going to appear on the left hand side of that horseshoe and then the other sentence is going to appear on the right hand side of the horseshoe. So for number two we have P horseshoe S. Number three is a pretty straightforward a conjunctive statement using the word but. So with A and E as our proposition letters, number three is A dot E. Number four, we've got kind of a tricky sentence here because it appears as if though it's a simple sentence, but it's actually a compound sentence. The two sentences that make up this compound sentence in number four uh, are cigarette makers are honest and cigarette makers are socially responsible. And there's two different ways that we can translate this. One of those ways is using a wedge. And if we use the wedge to translate this statement, we're going to write it like this, tilde parentheses H wedge S. And the way that this statement would read, this symbolized statement it would read is this. It is not the case that either cigarette makers are honest or cigarette makers are socially responsible. It's neither of those things, and that's what this statement here says. The other way we could translate this is using a dot. And if we chose to translate this with a dot, we'd write it as tilde H dot tilde S. And this statement reads as this, as, uh, like this. It is not the case that cigarette makers are honest, and it's not the case that cigarette makers are socially responsible. They're neither, and that's exactly what the original says. Number five, again, we have two statements kind of smashed together here, making this look like it's a simple statement, but it's actually a compound statement, and it's made up of these two statements. Psychologists prescribe antidepressant drugs. Psychiatrists prescribe antidepressant drugs. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to translate this in one of two ways. We could translate it with a dot, and if we do that, we're going to say tilde parentheses uh, o dot y parentheses, and we would read this as follows: It is not the case that prescribe. Uh, it is not the case that both psychologists prescribe antidepressant uh, drugs and psychiatrists prescribe antidepressant drugs, and that's kind of what this original says. They don't both prescribe them. Okay. The other way we could translate this is as follows: We could do tilde o wedge tilde y, and the way we would read this uh, translation is this. Either psychologists don't prescribe antidepressant drugs or psychiatrists don't prescribe antidepressant drugs. And what we want to take note of here is that when we uh, do these translations, we always express our proposition statements as affirmative statements, and then we use tilde to negate those statements in our symbolic representations. All right, number six. We've got three sentences here, which means we're going to be using parentheses. I chose H, P, and Q to represent the statements. And and with that as our translation, we see, or with those as our propositions, we can see that we're translating here an if-then statement, a conditional statement, and we know that whatever follows the word if is going to appear on the left-hand side of our uh, horseshoe, and then the other statements are going to appear on the right-hand side of the horseshoe, and we're going to need these parentheses around P wedge Q because we see in the original statement that these are the two things that will uh, be true if it's true that health maintenance organizations cut costs. So these two statements go together. We can have only one operator other than tilde outside of parentheses, so we're going to group up P wedge Q just like that. Number seven. We've got the word only if here, which indicates this is a conditional statement. This is a statement that requires a horseshoe in its translation. And we know that whatever follows only if is going to appear on the right side of the horseshoe, and then the other sentence is going to appear on the left side of the horseshoe. So I chose J and A as my proposition letters, and number seven then is J horseshoe A. Number eight, we've got three uh, statements again, we've got cocaine is legalized, its use may increase, criminal activity will decline. And again, we've got another uh, uh, conditional statement here. So we know that cocaine is legalized, the sentence that comes right after the if, that's going to be on the left side of our horseshoe. And we see that these two other sentences, its use may increase, but criminal activity may decline. Those are the two things that will be true 
if C is true. And so we're going to group those together uh, with parentheses. Number nine, again, we've got three sentences. And we've got here an equivalent of an if-then statement, assuming that, given that. These are words that indicate, okay, you've got a conditional statement here, and the sentence that follows assuming that is going to be the sentence that appears on the left-hand side of the horseshoe. So if we use S to represent it's sunny this Saturday, we're going to say S, uh, horseshoe, and then we've got these two things that will be true. Jane won't go surfing, and April will play golf. And those two things will be true if it's sunny this Saturday. So we're going to group these two, two together. And again, noticing that we're translating uh, our individual simple propositions in, as affirmative statements and then negating them in our symbolic translation so it makes it easy for us to keep track of the sentences uh, and how they correspond to the original. All right, and finally, number 10, we've got an if and only if statement, which means we're going to be using triple bar, this little hamburger deal here. And again, we've got um, Two things kind of smashed together. Pete and George will be at Plaza Grill tomorrow. Well, that means Pete will be at Plaza Grill tomorrow and George will be at Plaza Grill tomorrow. And we're going to uh, join up those two sentences with this dot and we're going to bracket them together with uh, parentheses because it seems to be saying that these two things will occur if and only if, in other words, triple bar, John's not working. Okay, so we've translated John's not working as John is working and then we've negated it with a tilde in our symbolic representation.